there is great value in handmade objects. First of all, they tell stories. They tell stories of the maker that the maker is trying to share with the viewer and the public. They also have, you know, the tactile qualities and they are absolutely unique. Um, there is no one other handmade thing just like the other, you know what I mean? So handmade things come with a certain quality and an essence of the individual who makes them. And then people who view them can see themselves or see parts of themselves in, in the objects that they're looking at. Hi, my name is Juliana and I am a ceramic artist. I prefer to be called a ceramic artist because I make works in clay that tell stories about my heritage and where I live and where I come from. Ceramics is a very old custom, traditional custom of making vessels for food or storage of water and coming, being a black woman, an African woman, the continent of Africa is filled with traditional ways of making pottery. So sometimes when I make pottery, I will use the traditional techniques and create vessels using those techniques. I'm also inspired by techniques in Japan. Um, ceramics is a very vast um, body. You can spend your entire lifetime learning just one particular area. So I try to investigate build my skills and learn as much as I can. Um, so what I try to do is to create stories about myself as a woman, as a maker, as a Caribbean woman, and to try to share that information with Barbadians and visitors and whoever is interested in, in my work. It's a very long heritage, you know, starting from the Taino, moving into the enslaved population and it was used in the sugar industry and then there was a cottage industry from Chalky Mount where we all know about um, ceramics and even to today. We have our pottery and getting the clear from the lands and how many people know, you know, in the schools that know about throwing the wheel and throwing a, a pot and, you know, sitting down and because these things is creation. People really love things that are handmade because it contains the essence of the maker and then you can see yourself in it as well. My name is Erika Jelani. Welcome to Ngozi's Farm and Cultural Sanctuary located in Turnisal, St. Andrew. And uh, right here, as you can see uh, in the background, there's a wider range of basketry items, all hand woven, by myself and my family, uh, which goes under the signature roots and grasses. So we have a variety of products from placemats to laundry baskets to decorative items. You know, so it's a handwoven, authentic Barbadian baskets, you know, both functional and decorative. In those young days, trying to figure out and you know, map out a path in life, and uh, I sat down and meditate and started to pray to the Most High to ask for guidance to show me um, a way and the way forward in my life at this juncture. And uh, this just slapped me from me. And the jumper, yeah, 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 I got it. I can do baskets. And everybody was like, whoa, you can do what? I say, yes, I do a basket. And I remember my sister was saying, my, my elder sister in Canada now, Evadne, she was saying, um, why you don't go and do a time study analyst that, like, you know, a, a, one of the factories down the Harbour Road? And they said, no, that's not what this bread showed me. And it's why it said, do baskets and they do a basket. So. Ngozi was the middle name of my daughter that passed. So I put the farm like in memory of her 
um, to continue that kind of legacy. So Ngozi's blessing, and we ask for the blessing for our crops and for the blessings of our farm and for that continued success and prosperity. And here at Ngozi's farm, we plant a wide variety of organic fresh fruits and vegetables, um, cassava, sweet potato, and also we plant the vegetables, sweet peppers, salt peppers, cabbages. We have a good crop of bananas and plantains. Plant, we plant a variety. My name is Shanika Burnett. I'm 35 years old and I'm representing Aisa Textile Design and Shakad Eco Lifestyle. I've been at every Bridgetown market from the time I could probably walk, um, Whole Town Festival, um, the, the opening gala in the park, NIFCA. So I, I'm really a child of the cultural industries. Um, one of the first like workshops I would have done outside of school with the NCF, I was, I think, 11 years old. I was the youngest participant and I did a face painting workshop. So I was always active in the industry and like to experiment with different techniques and different genres within the industry. One of the main things that I would have always seen around us is our use of natural materials, our repurposing of um, materials, and always trying to use things that are natural and would not cause harm to the environment, and that when they do break down, they would go back to the earth. So that really inspired my love for working with natural materials. Also in terms of the approach that we use to dye in our fabrics, we look for the, the safest, um, Product, the products available on the market as well as the best quality textiles because we also think about long-lasting products which wouldn't need to be replacing so all of that goes into the sustainability aspect of the products. Up until COVID, you know, it was a very inspiring journey. I've been able to travel the world showcasing Barbados. I've have received many accolades for what I do and it has been very encouraging and inspiring especially working with alongside other designers and other artists and really being honored for for my work. Since Covid I had to kind of pivot and try to re collaborate how I would continue going forward and I've realized that in terms of fashion I wanted to take a more digital approach so I'm still kind of working out the kink, kinks as to how I'm going to go about doing that but in terms of the Aisa textile designs we've really started to work more on our home furnishings aspect and we've been creating more products in that range and even additional products that we didn't have before more high-end range products so that we can market to another audience we've been spending a lot of time at home so we've been thinking that you know, people have found a new found love for the space and we've been really working, trying to gear towards that market, you know, the holiday season and that kind of thing. Before the pandemic um, hit these shores, uh, we used to operate from a kiosk in a departure lounge of the Grant Lee Adams International Airport. And three weeks after we moved in, everything was shut down. Uh, because of the security protocols for, for COVID. Um, and I thought I had made the worst decision <laughs> in my life at the time to have a business. So I had put everything I had um, into opening the business at that point in time. And so it needed to be open. <laughs> and so when, when, the, um, when the pandemic hit, I had my 24 hours of fear, like, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. What we can do and then it was straight into strategic planning and we use kind of like lots of local channels and it just grew from there the rest is history let me start by saying i had no plans of being an entrepreneur it wasn't the path uh, that i was taking i was taking the traditional route um, that you're kind of taught from young you go to school you do well, you do all these degrees, you get all the nice jobs, and that's the recipe um, for, for success, right? 
old formula, but um, I followed that one and it just came a point in time it wasn't working for me anymore. I remember having a conversation with my grandmother. I was telling her, I don't think I'm happy anymore. Um, and I wanted to go back to school to do yet another degree uh, and retool myself maybe to do something else. And she laughed at me. Yeah, she basically told me, she, actually she's stoops. She was like, what do you want to go back to school for? <laughs> What's her reaction? She's like, it's time to use your hands. I didn't raise you with one talent. It's time to use your hands and um, create, do something, create your own dollar, you know. Um, and it's the best advice I've ever had. She challenged me not um, to, to get more education, but to use the one I had to start a business. Um, and whatever I did, she ch the challenge was to make it my own, um, whatever I settled on doing. And she was like my biggest cheerleader. She was the reason I got started. Unfortunately, she died three months before I could open the store. But everything of the scents, everything of the whole feel of the brand is to honor her legacy. It honors the, our relationship. And she raised me. She lived with my parents, my sister, and myself. And so her influence is really heavy on my life. And everything here is some good memory that I have with her. From the preparing the jars to the mixing, the blending, the pouring, the labeling, every single thing is handmade. I stopped probably drawing for a year because I was a little lost and it could get in discouraging when you're working on your own and you don't really have that backing. I had one or two peers I was really close to and we still used to talk about art, but you know, you can't help it. It's human to feel discouraged sometimes, especially in a field that is so like stigmatized, especially here, like if you do art here, it's like, you just, it's just a hobby. Even like getting work sold was harder because everyone was either trying to save money or people lost their jobs or whatever. and. It was a depressing time for everybody, but I found like sometimes the most depressing moments tends to give birth to the most creative things. It causes you to like experiment more. I could almost see like different worlds or a lot of times it's about emotions or you know just experiences I may have but it's almost like seeing internal feelings as something external. So a lot of my work reflects that idea of emotional landscape and create building worlds or building dreamscapes for these like thoughts that may have rendered or you know dreams that may have transpired that I document. For development for the future, I think handmade things, there will be more and more space for handmade things because in our fast-paced world and how we often disconnect from people, handmade things bring us back to ourselves and, and, and help us to share with, with other people and share culture and history and, and heritage and all those kinds of things. So there is absolutely great value in, in handmade things. I would like to see more emphasis being placed on Caribbean inspired fashion, more emphasis being placed on Caribbean inspired art and not just the fact that it was made in the Caribbean but I would like to see the Caribbean inspiration in it more because I think that that is what we really have to sell to the world. I think that everyone has their vision or their view of, of our concept of, of our aesthetic. For example, we know what African fashion looks like, we know what Chinese garments look like, Indian, hip hop. So I think that what I would like to see is a more cohesive approach to like defining Caribbean aesthetics. Still need the, the, the opportunity for a proper market 
opportunity for proper avenues for sales. It is the opportunities that's there, but sometimes you have to believe it. Like me, from 1980 to now, and I'm still into my words because I, I hold the faith. I pray every day. I ask God to guide, protect me, bless me, enhance my creative ability, enhance my creative skills. You don't get here alone. People, there's a lot of individuals over the years who have poured into my life. Whether it's a word of encouragement, I like what you're doing, Irika, keep it up. Oh, these baskets are so lovely. Who made them? And then you form conversations, and, and that helped to lift an empty person's with purchase as well. So I always say, you know, to individuals to support, appreciate, and purchase Barbadian fine arts and craft. Mm -hmm.